We are trying to work on the continental free trade area. We want to have a conversation here about how the CFTA can be an instrument through the continent we desire. An equitable continent that is transformed from the structure that is today to an economy that can power the fulfillment of all the human needs and aspirations of people in the country. We also try to suggest that there is a body of knowledge, of thought, of political practice and methodology which can guide us there, and that is contained in the heterodox and feminist approach. We are focusing on that partly because as a response to the, the dominant approach to the person, um, and then also to what dominant. For instance, any, any person who has been listening to the CFT discussion that's going on so far, if you happen to be there, there is a constant focus on modalities of tariff mobilization. But even more importantly, the political questions which are dominated by a particular paradigm, which is speaking of neoliberalism, <coughs> who for the past 25 years or more have dominated policy making. So when you listen to, to officials, it is a template for the CFT for governments to go and negotiate. Basically, the officials are like a technicist guy, and more or less usurping the role of policy making of government and therefore the role of citizens and try to promote an agenda which is refused by the Our concern here is to challenge that. And to challenge that by saying that we are not going to start from scratch, but it's a body of thinking, of economic thinking, and practice, all the way from Karl Marx to Hajim Chan and the Ashtanga, which is rich in telling us where we are coming from as an and how we can help ourselves. So we want to challenge you together and ask to do two things. First of all, to root a discussion of continental free trade area, what we consider to one of the missing links when we talk about Africa, to root our discussions in African realities, the specificities of Africa's economy, society, its people, the things that make us unique, both positive and negative, to find out what it is that people in different places are able to meet their material. To root in that society. But secondly, to root in, the, in social processes which are governed by power imbalances. Okay. What we are talking about when we talk about politics is the imbalance of power around resources, then translates into poverty for some, into patriarchy, and gender oppression, segregation for others, into the marginalization of different social groups. <coughs> that power imbalance is the core of the analysis that we want to do here. As a basis for rethinking and strategy about how we can interview the process that is going to be our continent. What is it about Kafta? Is it the light at the end of the tunnel? Mm -hmm. Are we seeing some light? Because in Africa, uh, we have seen a lot of darkness since the structure adjustment programs, the EPAs, the whole neoliberal agenda. There's a, there has been a lot of darkness. But now, CAFTA, is it a beacon of uh, hope or not? Now, let me start by saying that in a certain sense, we have to be a bit precise because the continental free trade area is just a free trade area. When, when you hear ministers and officials of the African Union Commission speak, they talk how the continental free trade area itself is linear integration. It's not. This is a free trade agreement. A trade agreement which is seeking to liberalize, to lower tariffs, and deregulate services among countries. By itself, it cannot create a market. By itself, it cannot create linear integration. By itself, it cannot create structural transformation. So what is the correlationship between what they are negotiating? And I suspect that making that disaggregation is important for us to begin to start in the area. What really is the kind of structural transformation that we are talking about? What are the imperatives of that transformation? And if you understand the imperatives, what then should be what we are aiming to do? And how do those things that we are aiming at? then become a benchmark for assessing whether or not 
or a table now constitutes the kind of CFDA that we can believe in. How do we, in terms of the productive service of our economy, agriculture, okay. manufacturing, how do we, in terms of all, address the issues inside them and interlink them? That's the first question. Second, uh, because of the nature of our, our, of our country, because our countries are countries which are artificially created as boundaries, what it means also is that when we are talking about yeah. structural transforming our economy internally, we are talking about regional dimensions. Linkage internally is also regional linkage. So that has the two go together. Then we are talking about transforming the areas of infrastructure which support production. We are talking about building markets. Okay. So these are the three co concrete areas of intervention for me that, that has to be what constitutes the agenda for structural transformation. If you take this as a starting point, okay, and then we ask ourselves the question about what the CFTA is saying. The answer is obvious. The CFTA is intervening in the area of markets. By intervening in about one fourth of market issue. What the CFTA wants to do is that African countries among themselves have tariffs. Okay? So when I spoke something to uh, maybe in Kenya, the Kenyan government has a high tariff. And we want to remove that. Now that may be useful. I, I have no argument about whether it's useful or not. We can come to look at that later. CFTA is about removing tariff barriers and non-tariff barriers. That is it. But the CFTA, as I said, the primer, will not create you a market when there's no exist. Removing a tariff does not create you a market. If there's no labor market, you can remove as many tariffs as you want, there will be no labor market. Okay? So what I'm suggesting is that the CFTA is intervening in only one area for the multiplicity of problems that we have that we have to have. So the question then becomes, how do we get the CFTA to be relevant for the issues in the other area? The problem of the CFTA is not simply that it's intervening in one small area where there's so many areas that we must address to make it relevant for structural transformation. The bigger problem, in my mind, is that it is being driven by an orientation which is externalized. So an African official actually gets up and says, we must have an F CFTA which gives more to Africans than it gives to European. Now that sounds very nice. Of course, if you are an African and you have an agreement among yourself, you must give more to your African brother or sister than you give to the Europeans. Unfortunately, however, some of the things that we are giving to the Europeans, we give them under duress, force. So we give the Europeans, we give up to them under the EPA our right to use export taxes to support the transformation of raw materials into products. We give up to them, right? And that's bad. Now, if we give that up also in our context, it'll be terrible. So what we should be thinking about is, how do we use the CFTA, for instance, as a lever for reorganizing some of the bad things that we have done outside? Right? For whatever reason we had for doing some of those agreements, in the WTO, in the EPA, in bilateral agreements, most of those inside them are negative. Now, if the CFTA does not allow us to get out of those kinds of negative agreements, if on the contrary, it helps us to internalize in Africa those agreements, then it will become an instrument for our own continuing imprisonment. 